Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here, and today we're going to do another legal question online stock span. Okay, so first let's go ahead and understand what this question is asking. So we are going to be given these stock numbers at each day. So on day one, we are given 100, right? So this is day one. And then on day two, we're given an 80. And day three, we're given a 60. So that's how we're supposed to read these numbers and we need to build a system to store these numbers first of all and not only store them but return um, our value of our previous day stocks based on some conditions so let's go ahead and look at what those conditions are great so the condition that I need to check is um, going backwards so let's say I'm at day 4 here 70 right going backwards I need to check how many days did my stock um, this price was lower or equal to 70 so I just need to check if there were any prices starting from this fourth day um, and then going back and checking in the past if there was any other day which had a lower stock price or equal to 70 stock price than this day okay so let's look at it on a graph to be uh, more clear about what the requirements are for this problem so if I'm in this graph so here is day one these are days below and these are the prices so I'll just write them out quickly so these are the prices and our days are below right so here on my first day I have a hundred so I just need to return one in this case right so when s um, next hundred is called we just return one because there are no other days to compare and the default value that they've given us is one okay next day is 80 so 80 we're at 80 and we need to see if there are any days where the price was lower than 80 right so there is nothing lower than 80 here because hundred is higher than 80 right so we just don't do anything and return our default value one okay next we are on day three and on day three we're at 60 here right and at 60 I look here and I see okay there are no stocks in the past that have been lower than 60 this is a low point this is the lowest uh, at the minute so we don't we don't do anything and we just return the default value which is one right and then on day four uh, we call with the 70 so here this is an interesting case so we're at 70 on day four and when I look when I look before 70 so what I need to keep track is what are the events that happened um, before this date right so I'm always looking backwards so from this point from this 70 if I look back I can see that there was one one day where my stock was lower and that was the day before at 60 so what I need to do is I just need to add one to my default value one here right and I will return a 2 so if you look here in the 70 you need to return a 2 for this case okay and then over here I'm at 60 again and um, on day 5 yeah and I have to look back and see from this point now are there any stocks that are lower than this value and we can see that there are no stocks that are lower than um, 60 here right so Again, we just go ahead and return our default value, which is 1. Great, so now I'm at this value 75, and I need to look back and check how many stocks have dropped, right? So here we have one drop, and then at 70 we have one drop, and again at 60 we have one drop. So what we need to return is 1 plus my number of drops. So in my number of drops is 3, and that's how we return a 4 here. And same thing with 85, so we have one drop here, one drop here, so two, three, four, and five. So I need to add one plus five in this last case and return that value at 85. So that's how they're getting a six here. So one plus five is six, and that's how they're returning all the values. Um, I hope this question makes sense. I know it took me like a little bit of time to understand the question. But once you understand it, the solution is pretty straightforward. So let's dive in and look at the different ways we can solve this problem. Okay, so one of the ways to solve this problem is just to have an array and keep iterating over it while we get a next number. So we can have this 
we can store all our val values in an array and each time we get a next call to check, we would have to iterate over all our previous numbers um, in the worst case to check if those numbers are lower than my current number, right? So that would take me longer time than having a system where I can check with one pass if my number um, is lower than my current number or not, where I can access the element in constant time, right? So what our solution should look like is we just need to do one complete pass and access just the last element with our uh, count of dates, which we need to return. And when we think of a solution like that, one of the data structures um, that we can apply is a stack, right? So a stack uses a LIFO approach. So that is last in, first out. And with this approach, it is easier for us to access the last element on the top of our stack. And we can just grab that value and return um, our number of days, right? So that's why we want to go with this approach. Awesome, so let's populate this stack manually and see how we're getting these returns from the stack. So the first thing I've done is put the first element in, which is 101. And the reason we have a one here, we need to return a one here, is because we're including this value as well and we're counting it. So that's why there's a one there. And the next thing we need to put in our stack is 80. And what we need to do at each step before we um, check our values is we need to see if 80 has a lower value in a previous day. So we are here in 80 and we need to check is there a value that is lower than this in a previous day? And the answer is no. So we don't need to pop anything. All we do is we just put in the 80 here and we will also put a one there because we are just counting this value and we are not um, including any other previous day's values. So this is what our stack looks like now. And the next element is 60 and we do the same thing. Great, now our next number is 70. And at 70, we need to return two. So we have our 70 and we have initialized this with one because we're counting this 70. And now we need to check, hey, is there a number less than 70 in my stack? And yeah, there is, there is one more number here. So what we do is we take this one, we take this one out and we add it to our default here. So we do one plus one. And then what we do is we remove that lower number from the stack. So we remove the 60. And so we have two here as our answer and we set our next value in the stack as 70 and two, right? So that's what we're going to put in here. Okay, now we're at our next value 60. We are over here and we don't have a value before 60 that's lower than 60, right? So again, we don't need to uh, pop anything out of the stack. So what we do, we just put in 60 and we put the default value, which is one beside it. And we just return a one. So if you see for the 60, we just return a one. So at each point, we're returning this value here. Um, and then our next value is 75. And at 75, what can we see? We can see that, yeah, there are two values that are lower than 75, right? So we have here, we have a 60 here. Actually, there's three values. So we have one here, one here, and one here. So we have two 60 and one 70. So these three are lower than 75. So what do I need to do? I need to first initialize my 75, so 75 and one, so we count this value. And to this one, I'm going to add the three. And where will I get this three from? I will get this three from the last element of the stack. So this value first, so I'll get the one, and then I will pop this, and then I will get the two here, and then I will pop this, and then I will add this three to our value here, one, to our default value. So we add that and we get four. And that's how we're getting this value. So if this idea makes sense to you, then the code is pretty straightforward. So that's all we're doing. We're putting our values in a stack and at each step we're comparing to our last element in the stack and seeing if there's 
if the that value is lower than our current value like we're just trying to see at each point do I have a value that's lower than my current value and if there is then we just add that number of days to our current number of days and that's it and we're just returning our days okay I hope this solution um, makes sense to you and you're able to understand the problem better now let's look at the code to be even more clear Great, so the time complexity for this solution is O of n because we are iterating over all the elements here. So that's O of n and the space is also O of n because we created this stack. We created this auxiliary data structure to hold our um, all our counts and our prices. Awesome, so I'm back in the code and the first thing I'm going to do is declare our days variable which will keep track of our time span. Um, so I will initialize this as one um, and then I will go ahead and return days. So this is what we want to return um, each time this function is called, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is we are going to put our first element in the stack. So we can say self dot stack um, dot append and what we're going to append here is our price and the days, right? So we want the format of this to be, to look like, um, here, let me just comment an example. So for the first case, when we are given 100, we want to insert in our stack like this. So we want both values to be present. And then the next element um, will, be, will be entered the same way. So we will, in the first, um, position will be the prices so that will be here and then in the second position is our span of days that we're counting okay so that's how we're going to store this data um, now what we're going to do is do a while loop over our stack so we'll say while self dot stack and so this is just saying that when the stack uh, is not empty and we want to check if self dot stack if the last element of our stack is my, so the way we get that is by doing minus one here in Python and we want to check at position zero so why do I say position zero so this is our position zero element right this is position zero and this is position one so we always want to keep comparing that price so this is our price and then this is our days so we want to compare that price and see if that is lower or equal to the price we are passed here in our function when the next method is called so we want to check that and if that is the case then what we want to do is first we want to add that to our days so in the case of 100 if we um, or given a higher element here. Let's say we were given 105, right? So what we want to do is we want to return two. So we want to take this one and then add it to our days. So we would do days plus equal. And what we want to get is now the second element that we put in our stack. So the way to do that is just to say self dot stack. And instead of going to the first element, now we're going to go to the second element, which is the one. So that's why there's a one there. And what we're going to do next is just pop that element off. So we will do self dot dot pop. Okay. Okay. So once we have popped that element, all we need to do is just return our days. So let me just remove all the extra space here. Okay, awesome. So let's see, let's see and give this a try. So I will do run code. Okay, awesome. Yeah, we got the answer we expected and then I'm gonna go ahead and submit. Awesome, accepted. Thanks guys, I hope this 
video helped you understand the problem and if you like this video give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel happy coding guys